Hey guys, Pastor Kelly here today, and I want to talk to you guys about something very serious today. A lot of times when I'm posting videos, I'll do something silly like the cow tongue thing or maybe make a fun video, or a lot of times I'll uh, be praying or posting a sermon. Today I want to talk about a topic that's uh, very, very difficult for me, and I feel really strongly that somebody needs to hear this. And I want to talk today about those that have lost a child. Sadly, I'm in that club. And it's not a club that anybody wants to be in, <clears throat> I guarantee you. But, but I, want to, I want to bring some things out about losing a child. And, and, and maybe we can pray and maybe this will alleviate some pain or give somebody some kind of relief in some way. Okay, about three, a little over three years ago, my wife and I lost a grown son, and he died right in front of us. He was 36 years old, and uh, toughest thing I've ever been through. I, I'm, I've lost my parents, of course, at my age. Most people have already lost their parents. I've lost all of my brothers, all of my sisters, uh, other family members, close friends. A lot of my close friends that I came up with are already gone, but... There's nothing that can compare to the pain of losing a child. And so I want to I want to talk to you just for a few minutes about this today. I've tried to do that. I've did I don't know how many takes today trying to do this and it's just very difficult. So please please be patient with me if you will, but I I want to bring out some things that I hope this will help somebody. Number number one thing I want to tell you, if you've lost a child and you're dealing with that, maybe it was recent, maybe it's a long time ago. I I want to tell you something people say time heals wounds. I don't totally believe that. I also want to say that a lot of people will tell you after a while you just need to get past it and get over it. I want to slap those people when they say that because let me tell you something, there ain't no getting past it and there ain't no getting over it. You can learn to get by. You you can learn to overcome by the grace of God. And, and some would say, well, you know, you're just using God as a crutch. <laughs> I can't think of a better crutch. Uh, I remember one time many years ago, uh, this is not even really related to, to losing a child, but many years ago, uh, I went to a place where it was some, some guys that I knew, and there was a guy that I had known and grown up with that had been a pretty rough character, but he had actually went to prison, and he had gotten saved in prison. He came to Christ in prison, and we were both doing a meeting in, in this town, in this place, and uh, <clears throat> we were there, and it was, uh, it was awkward. I hadn't been around him much since our former days of drug use and things like that, and I'll never forget, there was somebody there that day that was angry at him, somebody from our past. And this guy was trying to pick a fight with my friend. And I'll never forget this. He kept putting his finger in his chest going, yeah, you keep hiding behind that Bible. You keep hiding behind that Bible. He was saying, we're still going to get you. We're still going to get you. And I'll never forget my friend's response. He said, man, I can't think of a better place to hide. <laughs> I can't think of a better thing to be behind than the Word of God. And so, yeah, well, they're just using it as a crutch, whatever. I'm going to tell you, the Lord will supernaturally get you through this. One of the things I want to tell you guys, man, if you've lost a child, number one, please hear this, it's not your fault. When John died, the first thing I did was blame myself. I was there that day. I kept thinking, I should have done this. I could have done that. Why didn't I do that? What could I have done? And you know, when it's all said and done, I can look back at that day and go, really, to be honest, there was not a thing I could have done. And even if there was something I could have done, it didn't happen. And it didn't bring him back. But so I just want to tell you, and I hope this helps you. And Lord, let anybody that watches this know and understand, Father, in the name of Jesus, that it's not their fault. Man, it's not your fault. All I want to do is take the blame. It's not your fault. And you get angry. You get angry. And I understand that because that's how I coped, man, was through anger. As a matter of fact, anger and or rage is about the only emotion I can really feel. It's hard for me to admit that, man. But it's true. Many times... And you get angry, and then you feel guilty for being angry. You be angry at God. Can I tell you number two? God didn't take them. 
Uh, and, and somebody would say something to the effect of me, and they'd say, well, the Lord just needed another angel, so he took so-and-so. Uh, people that say that, in my opinion, need to be slapped, okay? And I understand they mean well. I understand when somebody says something like that, they're just searching for something to say to try to comfort you. But can I tell you guys, God didn't take them. <clears throat> God didn't kill your child. God didn't rob your child from you. We live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen culture. We live in a messed up world. And, and bad things still happen to good people. Sadly, some people try to portray coming to Jesus as, as when you come to him, it's like a fairy godmother up in the sky. You're never going to have any troubles again. And all you got to do is make a wish and everything's going to be all right. Hey, man, I believe in prayer. Obviously, I do. I believe in the power of prayer. But bad things still happen to good people, sometimes for no apparent reason. We live in the world, man. We live in the world, and people are still going to die. People are still going to get hurt. And when you come to Jesus, it doesn't mean that you're never going to have any problems again. What it does mean is you've got the master of the universe, the creator of the universe, the savior of mankind living inside of you that can walk you through those hard places. And I'm living proof, man, that he has walked me through every hard place I've ever walked through. He's walked me through the grief. It's not God's fault. Isn't it funny how we as humans want to find somebody to blame when something happens? We got to blame something. We got to blame somebody. And even if it was somebody's fault, it doesn't help. And quite frankly, if there's somebody to blame, all it does is make you channel your anger and your rage at somebody. And that doesn't help you. It's not your fault. And it's not God's fault. And God, the Lord, did not take your child. Please know that. May have died. Most of the time, God didn't have anything to do with it. And there are some things that I just can't answer. But I can promise you, God did not take your child. I'm talking to somebody right now that's blamed God. And then you feel guilty for you blame God. Listen, you can be mad at God. He's okay with it. He's big enough to handle it. You may scream at him sometimes. I have. I did. He's big enough to handle it. And his grace is an amazing thing. He can stretch it over anything, man. We go to the Word of God and go, where's a reference point for that? Where's something in the Word? I find that King David, you find in, 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 the, in the Scripture where King David uh, had a child and the baby was sick immediately after birth. And, and David went to his face before God and he fasted and he prayed for like seven days, man, for the child to be healed. And guess what? The child died. And it says that his, his servants and stuff were afraid to tell him that the child had died and he figured it out. And when someone finally told him the child is dead, the word of God tells us that he got up, he washed his face, he changed his clothes, and he went straight to the house of God and he worshiped. I want to tell you something, man. You worship God through this stuff, even when you don't feel like it, even when you're mad at him, even when you're mad at the universe, man. Worship your way through this. It won't make it go away. It won't make it all better, but it will help you. And you can still find peace even in the midst of heartbreak. You can still find peace with God even in the midst of all that pain. And he will heal that pain bit by bit, emotion by emotion, piece by piece. But you got to let him. It's not God's fault. It's not your fault. God didn't take him. And David got up and wor worshiped and, and did all that. And then his guys were looking around going, man, what, what is his deal? What kind of guy is this? Man, how can he just do that? And David said, look, man, I can't bring him back, but I can go to him. And so that's another piece of hope that we have. Now, I've done enough talking. I've done enough talking, man. And, and I know the pain. I remember that day, it's, it's burned into my mind something that I will never forget. The, the absolute feeling of helplessness. And as a control freak like I am, that feeling of helplessness when you watch your child die and there's nothing you can do about it, it's tough. But I'm gonna tell you something, what I feel compelled and led to do today is to pray. Now, as I pray, I wanna tell you, 
This is not some magic wand we're going to wave and make everything all right, but the Bible still talks about the power of agreement, the power of praying to the Father in the name of Jesus and asking, and the Father will grant it. So I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to ask the Lord to do some miracles today. Before I do, I want to tell you, when I get through here, I'm going to try my best to post some links down in the comments of some numbers to call. Also, if you've gone through this, man, or you know somebody that's gone through it, you, you, you share this with them. But if you've gone through this, leave a comment. I will get on there and I will pray with you personally. You may say, well, I don't want to just read a typewritten prayer. I understand that. We'll figure out a way. You say, I need a human voice to talk to. I'll call you. I'll give you my number. We'll figure out some kind of way for us to communicate. You may live in Timbuktu and I live in Brownwood, Texas, but we'll talk, man. I'll make sure of that. We'll find a way to do it. And I will do my best to post some, some hotlines and some links to numbers to call. And I will do my best, man, to help you on this. But here's where it starts. Let's start the process of healing from this kind of loss through prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus. So, take a breath with me. Breathe in, breathe out. Be at peace for a moment. And you may not know what to say. If nothing else, just say, I agree with him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray. Father, I pray right now. Alleviate the pain. Heal the hurt. Heal the broken heart in this, Lord, of those that have lost a child, whether they've lost a baby, a small child, through accident, disease, or maybe something even worse, or they've lost an adult child. Father, in the name of Jesus, that pain is unbearable. You know that pain because you sent your only son to die for our sins, and we're grateful for that. So, Lord, I pray you begin the process of healing that pain today. And whoever's watching this, I speak the name of Jesus and that name of Jesus is greater than the heartbreak. That name of Jesus is more powerful than that heartbreak. That name of Jesus is Lord over all the brokenness. And I pray, Lord, that you begin the process of putting the pieces back together and healing those hearts that are watching this. Be merciful to us, O God. And I thank you because your word says that your mercy endures forever. And even those that are mad and angry and mad and angry at you, you're big enough to handle that, and you love us in spite of our spite for you. And I pray, Father, that you even heal people's hearts toward you. Let us know, Lord. Let them know. Let us know. It's not your fault. You didn't take them. And you're not doing it to punish somebody. Let them know that, that whoever's listening to this, there's somebody listening to this that thinks that, that they lost this child because God is punishing them for some hidden sin or some sin. Lord, that's a lie from the pit of hell, and I rebuke it right now. Let them know, Lord, you're not, you don't kill people to punish other people. On this side of the cross, Lord, we understand that that doesn't happen. So pour in the oil and the wine today, Father, in our lives. Make whole and restore the years that the locust has eaten, O God, in the name of Jesus. And I speak life and peace to those that would agree with me in prayer right now. And I thank you for it, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, and God bless you. Don't forget, if you need to, leave a comment. Not just so we can rack up a bunch of comments or get a bunch of views. That's bull. However, leave a comment and I'll get on there and I'll pray with you. And if you want to talk to me, we'll figure out a way. I'll give you my personal number. You can call me. I'll talk to you. This is, this is a day of healing. And I pray that this is a day of healing for everybody that watches this video. God bless you guys.